Thank you for watching Creating a Spatial Model in Erdas Imagine by Hexagon Geospatial eTraining. In this module, you'll be introduced to the Spatial Modeler, understand its basic components, and finally build and execute a model. The Spatial Modeler allows you to build a flowchart that contains operators strung together logically to produce output results. Real-time previews and visual indicators allow you to inspect the model as it runs, easily find and correct errors, and see the results before running the model. The Spatial Model Editor has two main types of objects to interact with, operators and connections. Operators can define the items that are acted upon or created in the model. They can also define the actions that are performed. Connections tie everything together and define the flow of the model. Operators have ports that are used to define input and output values, including connections to and from the other operators. Red ports let us know there are arguments that are not yet defined and either need a connection or a value associated to it. If a port is gray, it's either defined as a suitable value or the port is used to define an optional value. The model we'll create today will use two input raster objects along with a matrix. We'll run a convolution operator to create a custom pan sharpened image. Before running the model, we'll preview the results by adding a preview object to the model. Finally, we'll run the model and generate an output image. To get started, I have Erdas Imagine open with two viewers showing the QuickBird satellite imagery that I'll use as inputs to our model. In viewer 1, I have the higher resolution panchromatic image, and in viewer 2, I have the corresponding multispectral image. The model we'll build will take these two images as inputs and create a pan sharpened output image that contains the high resolution of the panchromatic with the band information from the multispectral image. I'll zoom in to show the difference between the images. As I zoom in and view finer detail, it's easy to see the spatial resolution and band differences between the two images. Now let's open the spatial modeler and build our model. For now, I can clear the other viewers. From the Toolbox tab, I'll select Spatial Model Editor. You can see we now have a Spatial Modeler Editor window for building our model. Also, a new tab, Spatial Modeler, has been added along the ribbon, providing tools to use as we build our model. On the far left, we see the Contents pane specific to the Spatial Modeler, and on the far right, we see an Operators pane. This pane gives me quick access to all predefined operators available when building a model. To start building our model, we'll first need to add an input raster operator. From the Operators pane, I can expand the input category, Raster, and drag Raster Input into the viewer. Double-clicking on the operator opens the Properties box. For our first input raster, I'll add qb 5 PanImg. Ensure the interpolation is set to bilinear, and set Read As to Float. Then I'll click OK. Once I click OK, the ports are no longer gray and the label has been assigned based on my defined criteria. Next, we'll add a matrix. Again, from the input operators, I'll drag matrix, kernel matrix input, into the viewer. I'll double click the operator to open and define the properties. For this matrix, we'll click From Library and select the default 7x7 7 7 low pass. Click OK and OK to the matrix dialog. Next, we'll need to add the Convolve operator. We can use the keyword search in the Operators pane to easily find it. In the text window, I'll type C-O-N. As I type, the filter is applied and I quickly see the operator I'm looking for. I can select it and drag it into the Modeler window. I'll clear my search by clicking the X in the upper right-hand corner. Now I'll connect the inputs to the operator. First, I'll connect the raster out port to the raster in port on the convolve operator. I'll simply drag the raster out port and drop it into the raster in of the convolution operator. I'll do the same with the matrix port to the kernel port. Now I'll add another operator. I'll expand the math and trig category, scroll down, and add divide to the model. I'll connect the output port from raster input to input port 1 and raster output from the Convolve operator to input 2. Now we'll add the last raster input operator and double click to open the properties and define it. I'll add qb05cherokeeMS.img as the input image. 
set the interpolation to bilinear interpolation, and read as to float, and click OK. Now we'll add the multiply operator from the math and trig group. I can connect the output from divide and the raster output port from raster input to object. Next, let's generate a preview. From the output operators, I'll expand view and add preview to the model. I can connect the output port from multiply to the preview object. From the execute group on the spatial model tab, I can click the preview button. This runs the model, opens a preview viewer, and loads the preview of the output image. The model can be resized to the extent of the smaller model window. You can also see green check marks on each object and operator, indicating the model has not encountered any syntax errors and is able to run properly each step of the way. If there are any syntax issues with the model, a red X would appear instead of a green check mark. This allows you to see specifically where the model has run into an error and allows you to open the operator directly and fix it. We can use the zoom tools to take a closer look at the preview results. We started this model with a 7 by 7 matrix. We can make changes to the model using the matrix property box and view the on-the-fly results in the preview window. First, we'll select the matrix object to activate the properties box. I can change the kernel name to 3 by 3 and see the results update in the preview window. Next, I'll try a 5 by 5 and again see the change. This is a great way to modify input values and view the results before running the model. For this model, I'll return it to the original 7x7 7 7 matrix. We're done with the preview window, so I'll go ahead and close it. On the Spatial Modeling tab, I can use the Fit to Frame button along with my mouse wheel to resize the model to the viewer. Now I can add the final output object. From the Output category, I can expand Raster and choose Raster Output. I'll attach the Raster Output from the Multiply operator to the Raster Output object. I'll define an output file name, in this case resmerge.img, set the data type to float 64-bit, and the file type to continuous, and click OK. I can now click Run from the Execute group and run my spatial modeler. I'll open a new 2D viewer and load my results. Notice that it has been subset based on the corner coordinates that were defined in the model. Thank you for watching this eTraining module, How to Use the Spatial Modeler. For more eTraining from Hexagon Geospatial, please visit hexagongeospatial.com slash eTraining.